Okay, this is going to be a really complex video, but I wanted to show you this uh, new idea that I've come up with that I think is a, a really nice way to do these surgeries guided and then expedite the process of creating your provisional restoration. So uh, first thing I've done is I've, I've planned the implants. If you were to look at this case, uh, the implants are all in place. I've got pins and I've already fabricated a bone reduction guide. If you don't know how to do that, see the other videos that I've posted on this YouTube channel. Um, from here, I now know what this reduced jaw is going to look like. So we're going to go with a two guide approach, but the goal is that we want the, uh, the surgical guide that we fabricate to actually be the restoration. And, uh, it, you know, if we can do that, then there's no opportunity for things to get off because nothing's being moved between doing the surgery and then putting cylinders on and picking it up. Uh, so I'll show you how I, go, how I intend to go about doing that. First of all, uh, you can export this now reduced jaw. You know what it's going to look like. And the reduction was done to basically in between the head of the implant and the bottom of the guide tube. So if we take that now into a program like Mesh Mixer, you can select a, a good portion of the ridge using the Select tool. And once you do, offset that. And I offset this by 4 millimeters and then smoothed it. So now I have this surface which I exported. Now let's jump to ExoCAD. And the way I want to designate these are as anatomic ponics. And I'm going to just choose zirconia. Uh, no on everything here. OK and we'll just jump through and control select all of these and I do want to select the connector between everything. I'm only going to do a one stone model because what I'll do is import the patient's uh, denture which was a scan appliance and I'm more or less going to set the occlusal arch to uh, that pre-existing denture because that's already been worked out aesthetically. It's in the right position. So I'm launching the the CAD module in ExoCAD And we want to build this on the four millimeter offset reduced jaw. Okay, that's the model of the jaw that we created more or less a spacer. That looks good for an insertion axis next. And now what we want to do is before I, I continue on in this wizard, I'm going to jump over to expert mode tools and I'm going to import the mesh of that patient's denture. So let's just call this a generic visualization mesh and load it. And this is the lower denture. You can choose the color. Uh, let's go with something like a green. And now OK. And for whatever reason, it did not change the color, but that's OK. We'll go with it. Now back to the wizard. We want to build this denture still on, uh, on the blue model, but now we can reference that denture as far as where to put the teeth. Okay, so about right there. I'm going to now push next. And obviously these are scaled up too big. So what I'll do, I need to turn the translucency down on this, is I'm going to go to chain mode. I'm going to lock each of those molars. And now I'm going to push all of these back, which is going to bring the size down quite a bit. All right, back to simple mode. Let's move them all simultaneously. And what I'm gonna do is pull, now they're scaled roughly in the right position. Back to chain mode. And this time I'm gonna lock these incisors. And I can simply grab the back end of this and line this up. So in essence, this scales the teeth. It positions them. We want to look at it from this side as well. And if you need to make some individual tweaks, you can certainly do that. Oops, let's undo that and not move them all simultaneously this time. You can line these up a little more accurately if you like. 
Now, it's worth noting that there's enough wiggle in all of this stuff. You, you can't really expect to put this thing in and not have to touch the occlusion. That's just really unrealistic. So, in reality, if I've got a little one millimeter impingement or something where it's not exactly the same, I don't care. That's fine. So, that looks pretty good. Next. And now I can turn this denture off. Don't need that anymore, and that's pretty much it for my wax up. I like it. Adapt to gingiva. Um, approximates, adapt, cut intersections. Next. As far as connector, I usually like to go with this one. And I don't really care in this circumstance that it's that big of a connector, so I could bump that down and apply that change. Okay, so it wouldn't let me go below six, but that's fine. Uh, this connector looks good, and now let's go to next. Do you want to delete these? No, I want to keep everything. So I've got this now. Um, this is my wax up, and if I was to turn on this jaw scan, again, it's sitting up and off the, the bone by quite a bit, but now I want to um, make the gingiva. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do now is jump over to expert mode, and I'm going to generate, where'd it go? There we go. So you would hit uh, the virtual wax up bottom. And now I do want to design the gingiva, design virtual gingiva, apply. All right, so this is the virtual ginger of a bottom. As you can see, it just blocks everything out. Okay. And now what I've got to do is the gingival design. So I need to click on the perimeter of my virtual gingiva. So I'm going to pretty much have this going around the arch. just around behind this one. We'll make it a little fatter on the lingual side. Okay. So here's the initial gingival proposal, and that looks pretty good. Might bring that up just a hair. Entangle those. And okay. And for whatever reason, the uh, gingiva here sometimes does this, and so we'll need to add, remove a little bit of this. Actually, let's get out of that. Freeform the gingiva, that's the right one. So we're going to go to freeform, add, remove. Now I'm going to bulk this up. And 
And why am I bulking it up? Well, I just don't want to have to worry about uh, breakage as much during the period while this is uh, healing. Because remember, this is going to be an immediate load restoration. And patients tend to break those a lot. Now, they're not going to be able to catastrophically break this because uh, it's going to uh, have metal inside of it. However, we don't want them to have really thin pieces of the superstructure, which is probably going to be PMMA or composite. If that's too thin, they will still break that. Maggie. Sorry, dog's getting in the trash there. Okay, so the gingiva is pretty well done. I'm, I'm not trying to make sure that I've got this perfect because I'm going to be mostly uh, doing this out of metal and that's going to need to be cut back. And so I'm not too terribly concerned about that being completely covered. Let's okay this. This is now the final wax up. And I can merge and save this as a restoration. All right, so this is my final uh, wax up. If I wanted to freeform this, which I do, then I can now go back. And what I'd like to do is make this underside where it's not um, concave like this, but rather make it uh, ovate. So remember how I offset the gingiva or offset the bone by four millimeters? That gives me the room that now I can inflate this and I'll probably inflate it to within about two millimeters of the actual bone level and that's going to create this underside which is uh, convex. So let's go up with our strength. Here we go. There's the right button. Freeform. Turn the strength way up. All right, so I'm just painting back and forth, inflating this. And periodically, what I'm going to do is turn on that jawbone again and visualize where the bone is. All right, so it's obviously protruding through the four millimeter offset, but this bone is what I'm actually looking at. Okay, I still got some room to go. And then I'm going to smooth out these rough edges too. So this is a much more cleansable contour to this restoration because the goal is to eliminate as much post cylinder pickup processing as possible we don't want to have to bring in a lab technician just to be able to reconstruct this thing like you normally would because it's such a mess I want this to be as finished looking as possible and that way it will expedite the conversion Let's look at the jaw scan now. Now we're looking pretty good. And if I look like I'm too close in areas, I can come in there, smooth that back a little bit. 
remove a little. So I'm looking for about two millimeters off the bone in, in all places of what that jaw is going to look like once it's been reduced. Okay, I like that. Smooth this one more time. All right, so great. This is a nice, ovate, cleansable restoration now. Great. Now let's export this. So save the file. This is going to be my merged bridge. So I'll save it. Let's jump back over to Mesh Mixer now. Import and append this. There it is. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hollow this. So edit. hollow and I want to shrink this entire thing by basically two millimeters okay so in doing that you can see that it doesn't leave me too big of stumps here so I'm gonna up that to maybe 1.5 update the hollow that's still a little bit squirrely let's go maybe one point Two, not eleven point two, one point two. Update. Just so you know where we're going, we're gonna we're gonna make this into the guide, but then we're gonna have an external um, shell, like a suck down type of a thing. And after the cylinders have been picked up after surgery, we're going to injection mold the entire tooth structure onto this, which is going to be a metal framework. So I'm I'm wanting some individual tooth retention going up into each of those. So this looks good. I think I'll go with 1.2. I like that. Let's accept it. And there is the exterior. So what I'm going to do is select that and I'm going to separate it. Because right now this is a hollowed object. So let me explain real quick. If I was to plane cut this See how this is a hollow object? Now that hollow object consists of an outer shell and an inner shell. So what I'm going to do is instead kind of hack it. I'm going to select the entire exterior, double click it, and then I'm going to separate that. Now it's its own object. And if I was to go to the one, turn it off, what it leaves me is this, which is another mesh. And I'm going to select all of it and then I'm going to flip normals. So now I have, in essence, a restoration which has been cut back by 1.2 in all dimensions. Okay, so let's turn this on. Um, I should mention, I don't want this necessarily cut back in all dimensions this much. I want it basically done from about halfway up. So how can I do that? Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come now Edit, I'm going to plain cut. Like so. Rotate that down a little bit. What I want to do is leave this nice flush kind of butt margin right there. This gives me still enough material that I'll be able to index that um, uh, suck down type of thing into the right position and index it into place. And then we'll have maybe one injection port and we'll shoot the white material all the way through this. So let's accept that. Great. And now let's combine these two. So combine, and then I'm going to make it solid. 
and I want to make it the maximum accuracy on this solid that's possible. So maximize that. You can even turn the density up a little. Update. Sweet. Okay. I'm going to accept that. And again, if you wanted to look back at where we started with, let's go get the original bridge again, and you'll see um, the idea. So we have this one, which is the full contour. If I print this and did a suck down over it with maybe one millimeter Essex plastic, then I'll have something that I could now take that shell that's created, drop it onto this, it would still index onto this common portion, which is going to be a smooth, ovate intaglio to this restoration, but it would leave all of this irregularity that can now be filled with your composite of choice, bisacryl, acrylic, whatever you want to do. All right, I'm going to export this and name it bridge with cutback clusals. Now, if I haven't lost you yet, I commend you on your attention span. It's pretty impressive. We're going to come back now to Blue Sky Plan. Let's import that object. Make sure it's done. There it is. Okay. So now let's import that STL model, the one of the cutback occlusion. Here it is. Great. Okay. It's going to ask you to stitch it, but we're not going to stitch it. We're just going to say cancel. And now you can see here is the model. All right. Now here is where the magic will happen. How do we turn this now into the guide? Remember the goal here is that I want to actually make this object be my surgical guide and what I'm going to do is print this in uh, your metal of choice chrome cobalt titanium whatever do your surgery through it it's going to have the guide tubes in it never take it out of place it's going to be pinned in place and uh, do your surgery and then screw the cylinders right on pick them up without ever removing it Again, without removing it, you're going to drop on that Essex over this uh, thing once all the cylinders have been picked up, and you're going to injection mold the entire superstructure to this, making an incredibly strong, hopefully incredibly aesthetic temporary. So the way I'm going to do this, for right now, I'm going to turn the pin tubes off because I'm going to go about capturing those a different way. Okay, so the t pin tubes are off, but... My regular surgical guide tubes are on, and if I were to go one by one and have you look at this, notice that I've changed my tube diameters on everything. I've changed the guide hole diameter to 5.15. I'm going to be uh, planning this for the Blue Sky Bio fully guided keyless kit, and I'm going to go without a metal sleeve because this whole thing's going to be metal. So the, the built-in key on those drills measures 4.95. I'm going to go 5.15 on the inner diameter of that tube, which will be a nice tight fit. Height for offset, if you are doing it without the, the metal sleeve, that has a half millimeter of lip height, so now you're going to have to bump it up from 8 to 8.5. Eight so that's what I've got. Now I jump to guide panel, and I'm not going to make a guide here in uh, like you normally would, which is, you know, draw a curve, all that kind of stuff. Rather, I'm going to hack this. And if you know anything about how to make a soft tissue supported guide, it's where you imported their denture, it digitizes it, and then that denture becomes the guide. I'm going to do that here. Okay, so these are the only tubes on. I'm going to use the automatic brush. And for my brush diameter, I want to make this be 12 millimeters. The default, I think, is 15 and what that is, is, is how much of an area around this tube is this going to clear out for your handpiece head to get in here. If you go with 15, it's going to be so big that probably the only tooth preps you'd be left with are these molars. If you go smaller than 10, you're probably going to have uh, no room to get your handpiece in. Okay, so I'm going to go with 12, and if you needed to, you could always come back. So, create scan appliance guide.
There we go, and let's turn off the original guide now and look at it. Okay, it cut back quite a bit. I don't really like how much that did it, so I'm gonna go back now. I can just delete that one. I'm gonna go back to the guide panel and let's change this maybe down to 10. And refabricate. All right, I like that a lot better. Now we still got plenty of vertical structure that's gonna support this. Um, this should work out nicely. Okay, so if you look here, this now is your surgical guide. Your guide tubes have been incorporated. Now you're gonna ask, well, that's not indexing onto anything, right? And, and that's correct. What I'm gonna do is create the guide in a different manner. Now I'll go back to my reduced jaw. Remember this one? created by this reduction guide. What I'm gonna do now is go to guide panel. On this reduced jaw, I'm going to build a surgical guide that is only one millimeter thick, because again, it will be metal. And I'm gonna create an indexing method. So this is like a bone indexing tray. So now I can draw the perimeter of this up and over the mental. Stay right at the mylohyoid ridge above the genials. Come back across. And it's a big perimeter, but that's okay. I can dial this back a little if I need to. Okay, so we've got that, and this one I do want the tubes on, and none of the surgical uh, guide stuff. So I'm going to turn my three pin tubes on. There they are, and now we're ready to create the guide. Okay, here's the resulting guide. It has the pin tubes. And the idea is that we are wanting to take this guy and connect it to that one. And in the, oops, undo that. And in the end, after this procedure gets done, be able to just cut this whole bone tray away, leaving a more or less finished underside to this. So we got a few more steps before we can do that. So I'm going to first go on to my abutments, turn all of them on, and I'm going to go one by one. And I'm going to make these be about seven millimeters. I want these big enough that they can uh, allow the multi-units to sit through there and not be in the way whatsoever and seven millimeters ought to do it. Should be a zero angle on them. Good. All right. And now I export that bone tray. So I'm going to call that one a bone tray and you could export each of these abutments individually because we're going to need to boolean subtract those. I'm going to export them all together and I'm going to call this bone tray and sev seven millimeter abutments. And then I go to mesh mixer, import, append. Let's turn all these other models off and just deal with this for a moment. We've got to make the holes for this. This is a bone indexing tray. This is what positions this guide and, you know, your restoration in one all in uh, place together. So what I'm going to do is double click that, edit, 
separate. And then I want to separate each of the abutment. Let's edit, separate, select, edit, separate, select, edit, separate, and that should be its own item. Okay. Control, select, Boolean difference. You'll need to uncheck auto reduce result. And then accept it. And now we just need to repeat that process with the other three. And I'm going to race through this and speed it up. If uh, you want to speed up your Boolean subtractions with these items, you can make them solid. It's going to condense their shape a little bit, which is fine for this purpose. So now we can come back, control select, Boolean difference. Okay, so we have our bone tray. We've got these things subtracted out. Now we need to turn on our, where was it? Not that one, but that one. Okay, and these look like they are touching in a few spots, which is good, because I want this to be a one piece object, like right there, that's touching. Um, actually, Those are not the ones because we want the one that has the surgical guide uh, through it. And so let's go back to Blue Sky real quick. That's the one we want, this green one. So file, export data. Just that one. And we're going to call this cutback occlusals and guide holes. Here we are. Now let's import that. I'm so impressed if you're still watching this. You don't even know. Now we're talking. All right, we have a connection here. We have a connection here. And that's just going to get ground back once we uh, do this. Back here, we need a couple of connections between this. And so. What I'm going to do is select this. We're going to get a little bigger spot size and maybe about yay big. Select that. We need to do the same thing over here for this portion. So I've selected that, push T for transform, and I just drag it up to connect it. Okay. So no wobble or anything on this. It's going to be rock solid, except, and now, let's see, clear that selection. Now I just need to complete all of this by connecting the two. So where are these objects? There and there, and we combine. And let's just make sure with the inspector that there's no problems, auto repair all done. Here is the final file, export it, and let's call this final combined bone tray and cut back. Great. So just to go over once again, because this is, I know it's super confusing. Let's turn all this junk off. All the visibilities off, the abutments off, and I'm going to import that last object. Import STL, final combined bone tree and guide. No need to align. 
Great. Now let's go through this um, as if it were the surgery. So we've got our implants and the way surgery is going to go is that we will take the lower jaw. It's going to look something like this. We're going to put on the reduction guide. You don't have a tremendous amount of bone reduction to do, but you'll pin this, drill, drill your pinholes, and then simply lower the bone down to this level across the jaw. And once you've done that, and if, you've, if you're going to do that, you're better off to go a little excessive than you are to leave it at all high. You cannot leave anything high if you're going to do this. So now we have the reduction done, leaving us this jaw. That's what the jaw will look like once you've done reduction. So now let's turn off the reduction guide. You've completed the reduction. Now you're ready to place implants. So let's put in this object. This is going to be 3D printed in metal. So directly in metal, the whole thing here. So it's going to be a big uh, heavy object. But what you'll do is you can just simply uh, outsource this to, I've been using Bertram Dental Lab. Uh, they can do a great job of printing this very accurately in chrome cobalt. So you would get this entire object and print it in chrome cobalt. You seat it in, the pins go back into place to make sure that everything stays put, and now you would start placing your implants. And so the implants get placed with the fully guided uh, kit from Blue Sky Bio. You've got room for your handpiece head to come in here. You bottom the implants out. And now without even removing the uh, guide or whatever you want to call it, now you would assemble the multi-unit abutments. Now I think a multi-unit abutment will go here through here, but if not, uh, you might have to pull it off and then re-index it. So let's put on multis. Okay, so right through that we've put multi-unit abutments in and then these would be the MMUTC cylinders um, that go onto the top of the multis. These are your temp cylinders. And now with these in place we can do a Cal Technique pickup. And a Cal Technique, if you're not uh, familiar with it, is just California adhesive looting. It's actually a better and more passive fit because just, you know, just like with a verification jig, these are sitting dead passive. There's a little bit of slop space around this and you inject that with a resin cement or whatever material you choose. Primo pattern's a great one, but you inject that and once that cures, the only shrinkage that can happen is in that tiny, tiny little gap. And so you end up with a more passive framework than you would actually have with uh, conventional techniques. So we do that times four. Again, hopefully you've not even had to remove this. And now everything is in place and the last step in the process is that you will take the uh, suck down which was created on this, right? You're going to save this file too, print one of them in whatever material and make a suck down over it with a, a nice resilient plastic, something like one millimeter Essex. I would cut a hole right here and I'd cut a hole right here. One of them is going to be an air escape and the other one's going to be for uh, injecting your material of choice. I would probably use Bisacryl here, something really opaque. Um, you could paint this frame uh, with something like our um, white metal that Blue Sky sells. It's an opaquer, and it would do a great job of opaquing any of that metal. Uh, if you do this in titanium, you could anodize it, maybe make it yellow. That would also help mask things. But nonetheless, you would come now, and the suck down that you made over that, before you even remove this, um, you might stick in just the long screws and let them protrude up and through some tiny holes in the plastic to maintain your screw channels. But once you've done that, you'll simply take your bisacryl tip, stick it in the hole in the, in the stuff, uh, in the suck down back here, and inject with lots of pressure. It shouldn't extrude out beyond this little ledge because you're gonna have a nice tight fit to it. So it's gonna shoot up and around all of this stuff here and it's gonna fill that back up to the original contour, which was, again, this shape. 
and you're gonna have a nice smooth surface to this it's gonna have super detailed anatomy and hopefully once you uh, check the bite it's gonna require minimal adjustment and you know if you ever needed to you could bust all that stuff off and and retread this and so hopefully if they were to chip let's say a tooth right here and you couldn't just fix it with composite stick your suck down back on there re-injection mold that whole thing and you know in theory if you wanted to after uh the patient has healed up if if you know the showing the metal is not a problem with their lip line or anything uh, there's no reason why you couldn't now come back with a definitive uh, zirconia bridge or something like a roundhouse bridge and drop that on as a cemented restoration here I would leave some little cutouts for being able to tap it off if necessary and this could essentially be your final restoration and again I, I skipped over it but once you've done that pickup now uh, you've picked up your cylinders in this maybe you even did this in the mouth although you could take it out and do that injection molding but once all of that's done and these cylinders are looted to this frame now we come back we cut that sacrificial support we cut that sacrificial support we cut the little connections right there where these are together and it basically leaves us a pretty much ovate contour to this that is a uniform two or so millimeters off the bone, which is about ideal for tissue. And for your suturing, I would have not sutured at all to this point. I would not suture until the final thing is screwed back in, and I don't think that whole conversion would take 25 minutes. And then I would put some horizontal mattress sutures, and I'd just snug the tissue up, probably a ton of PRF under here, but I would just snug that tissue up right against this nice ovate contour and treat this as if it's a giant healing abutment. Let the tissue heal to that perfect ovate contour as opposed to, you know, letting the tissue heal to a normal contour and then having to make a concave underside to your restoration to match that. So really complex workflow here, but I think the end result is a, a super nice, um, very strong guide and hybrid uh, that can last and potentially even become the permanent. So I'd love to know what you think about this, and uh, we'll see you later.